Good morning, guys. We're back for the read to analyze section of your scientific and technical text. She tells you here it's going to be your second read, and that this time she's going to keep track of how many questions you get right. Um, you already read it once, but it's important that you reread it and choose your answers carefully. And if you do that, you'll get a better score on this. Oh, there we go. Great. So as you go through this, you would reread each section. Magnificent Maglev, Train Up the Future. You can click on your microphones as you go to read you each section, as well as read the captions like we did before. So it says, a slow commute. Every day, millions of people commute by car. For many of these people, the journey to and from work is a slow and painful process. Their cars creep slowly along highways. They sit minute after minute in huge traffic jams, burning gasoline and polluting the environment. But perhaps the worst thing about traffic jams is the time they waste. Instead of sitting in traffic, these people could be doing more productive and enjoyable things. A recent study found that the average commuter spends an extra 38 hours a year in a car due to traffic. Trains can help. Trains can help avoid traffic jams. They can carry hundreds of passengers in a single trip. Think about how many fewer cars would be on the road if hundreds or even thousands of drivers in your town decided to take a train to work instead of their cars. Now think about all the kinds of things these people could be doing. They could work on their computers, they could read books, they could write texts or emails from their smartphones. There's no doubt that trains are more efficient than cars, but they also have their problems. Trains are very heavy, so they burn a lot of fuel. This creates pollution. Their weight also wears out rails, which then needs to be repaired. And most trains, although faster than cars, are not so much faster that they make commuters give up the convenience of driving straight to their destinations. And at this caption, it says, many passenger trains today provide more than just transportation. Some offer free internet access and onboard dining. So you can eat on them as well. All right, click on the girl here. She says, select two highlighted sentences that describe the effect caused by the weight of the trains. So because of the weight of the trains, what happens? There is no doubt that trains are more efficient than cars. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with the weight. But they also have their problems. Well, I think we're getting closer. Trains are very heavy. Okay, that tells us that they weigh a lot. But because they weigh a lot, what happens? So they burn a lot of fuel. That creates pollution. So because they weigh a lot, they burn a lot of fuel. This creates pollution. I like that. Let's click on that one. Sin. Now she wants us to select a second one. Their weight also wears out rails, which they need to be prepared. Oh, so because of their weight, the rails wear out, and then they have to repair the rails. I like that one. Let's send her that one. Oh, and she said we're correct again. Perfect. To the next page. But imagine what people might do if trains could travel at speeds of over 300 miles an hour. That's about half the speed of some jets. Impossible as it may seem, the use of maglev technology can make rapid train travel happen. The word maglev stands for magnetic levitation. By using strong magnets, this technology can levitate or lift trains up into the air. It can then propel them along at amazing speeds. Two forces that slow trains down. In order to understand how maglev trains work, you need to understand two basic forces, gravity and friction. First, let's consider gravity. Let go of a ball and it drops to the ground. The force of gravity makes this happen. Gravity causes all objects to be attracted toward the center of the Earth. Gravity makes a ball fall to the ground when you drop it. Gravity also makes it hard to lift a heavy object. Because of gravity, trains are hard to move. They need to burn lots of fuel to propel them and their passengers forward. Now let's think about another force, friction. Press your hands together hard, rub them together. You're feeling the force of friction. Friction is the force between objects that touch each other. The friction between your hands makes them resist being moved. Friction between a train's wheels and the rails also makes a train harder to move. Much of the fuel burned by a train is used to overcome friction. Friction also creates heat. This heat damages the wheels and the rails, and so they both wear out faster. Since gravity and friction make trains harder to move, it makes sense that reducing their force would improve how a train operates. That's where maglev technology comes in. Scientists discovered that by using magnets and the principles behind magnetism, they can make trains move faster and use less fuel. 
Friction between a train's wheels and the rails slow it down. Let's see her question. Look at the scientific ideas and events on the chart, then select the question mark and choose the statement that best explains their relationship, the relationship between them. So it says gravity makes it hard to lift a heavy object. Friction causes objects that touch to resist big mood. The wheels of a heavy train are in constant contact with the rails. So how are all of these things related? Friction is created by gravity and friction makes a train difficult to move. Not all natural forces make it difficult for trains to move efficiently. They didn't really talk about that. Gravity and friction combine to make a train hard to move. So is it the combination of gravity and friction making it even harder for a train to move? Or the heavier an object, the greater the friction? Well, that might be true, but which shows their relationship the best? I think the best relationship here, we could get rid of B. We can get rid of D because it doesn't really show their relationship. These both talk about gravity and friction. But I like that this one says it's their combination, how those are related and combined together make it hard for that train to move. We'll go ahead and send that. And tell her to continue. What is the structure of the last paragraph? So remember we talk about text structure during class, compare and contrast. We talked about problem solution. We talked about chronological order. What is the structure of this last paragraph? Is it comparing contrasting two types of trains. Well, here it's talking about gravity and friction. So not really talking about two different types of trains there. It states a problem and offers the solution. So it tells us what the problem is and how we're going to solve it. It expresses an opinion about trains. So it's all just somebody's opinion. No facts or information, really just their opinion. Or it describes how one event causes another. Well, let's look through here. That's where magnetic technology comes in. Scientists are already using the magnets, they can make the trains move faster. So they came up with the solution for the problem of the trains being hard to move. I think that goes best with our problem and solution option. Oops, I need to click it there. And send. Good. And done. On this page, we start getting some answers to our big question. How is knowledge of science important in developing new ideas in transportation? So remember on these pages before, as I read them, they were going through really the scientific background of magnetic forces. He said, yep, and there's one thing scientists definitely need to understand to make maglev trains work, magnets. So we're gonna use our chart and break it down. The power of magnetic force. If you've ever experimented with magnets, you know a little bit about how magnetic force works. Magnetic force causes the magnet to be attracted to iron or steel objects. That's why you can use a magnet to pick up a steel paper clip. Magnets can be both attracted, so pulled to, or repelled, pushed back, by other magnets. Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. When the pole of one magnet gets close to another pole, the magnetic fields around them affect each other. So if you place the north pole, Next to the south pole of another, the opposite poles will be attracted. They will stick together. If you put south, two south here, or two north next to each other, the poles will repel or push away from each other. These magnetic reactions are what make a maglev train work. All right, let's click on him over here. All right, well, again, we're looking for what explains the relationship here. Similar magnetic poles repel each other. Opposite magnetic poles attract each other. Magnets attract iron and steel. Each pole of a magnet has a magnetic field. What is the relationship between those things? Magnetic fields can attract or repel iron, steel, and other magnets. Magnetic force increases with the size of a magnet. It doesn't really talk about that. Magnets are capable of powering a maglev train. That is true. That doesn't really summarize their relationship here because we didn't really get into talking about the train there. Or both north and south poles of a magnet are of equal strength. Again, we didn't really talk about that here. I think overall, what we talked about was that we can attract and repel, right? We have repelling here, attracting here. We use iron and steel, and we talk about the fields. So I think the one that best summarizes all of those, they talk about the magnetic field, attract and repel, and then the iron and steel would be our first option there. Say done. Magnets levitate the train. 
The wheels of an ordinary train ride on steel tracks, but maglev trains are different. They don't have wheels. Instead, the trains guide glide above a single steel track called a guideway. One type of maglev train has C-shaped arms that wrap around the guideway. Magnets are placed along the arms and along the underside of the guideway. These magnets are not like the ones holding photos on your refrigerator. They are electromagnets, which means they only work when electricity passes through them. At rest, the body of the maglev train rests on the guideway. But when the magnets on the arms and guideway are activated, their poles become opposite and attract. This attraction causes the train to lift up to eight inches off the track. It's called electromagnetic suspension. For the train to remain afloat, the magnetic force must be constantly adjusted. This is done by varying the amount of electricity sent through the wires to the magnets. If the magnetic force is too weak, gravity wins and the train drops back onto the track. If the magnetic force is too strong, the arms of the train stick to the guideway and the train will not move. Let's see what he says over here. Which scientific fact explains why a maglev train can rise from its guideway? Is it because friction affects all objects in contact with each other? Well, the friction, does that have anything to do with our train rising, the way that it rubs together and slows down? I don't love that one. The C-shaped arms are made of steel. That's true, but does that have anything to do with why it rises off the guideway? Opposite poles on magnets attract each other. Oh, the opposite poles, they say, attracting each other is what is pushing it eight inches off. So that one might be it. Or electricity we can use to create magnetism. And they are using electromagnets. But the best option here that's telling us why they are rising off are our opposite poles attracting each other. Because then it says here that that means it's lifting up eight inches, right? I think he has a second question. What role does electricity play in making maglev trains work? So now we're talking about the electricity. So now we're looking at the last paragraph. Does it adjust the amount of magnetic force used by the electromagnets? So is it changing and adjusting that amount of force? Does it make the arms of the train stick to the guideway? Remember, it only sticks if the magnetic force is too strong. So I don't like that one. It says that in the last sentence. It creates a magnetic force that causes a train to drop back onto the track. Remember here, it said if the force is too weak, it'll drop onto the track. So that's not a great one either. It clamps the maglev, tra maglev train securely onto its guideway. Well, remember, it's not clamped onto the guideway. We're wanting it to rise above and then go across with that eight inches off the track. So we don't want it to be clamped exactly to the guideway there. So we're going to use it adjusts the amount of magnetic force. Let's look back on this paragraph because we like that one the most. To remain afloat, the magnetic force must be constantly adjusted. On the right side here, there's another one. The title of this article, Magnificent Maglev Train of the Future. Based on what we've read in the diagram on this page, why do you think that the maglev is not common throughout the world? Is it unsafe to operate at high speeds? Now, from what I read, it never said that. And looking at this picture, it doesn't even talk about the speeds. It's a complicated machine to build. Well, it does seem to be pretty complicated to build. Like, look at all these pieces. It's got electromagnets. It's got a guideway. We have C-shaped arms. Training maglev drivers takes many years. I don't see anything about the drivers on here. And I don't remember reading anything about the drivers while we were doing the passage. The use of electricity makes it expensive to run. Now, there are electromagnets. But it doesn't ever talk about the price or how much it's going to cost. So I think the only one that makes sense in this one is it's complicated to build because I can see all of these pieces and it talked about all the different things needed to build it. I think we're done with this section. And to the last page. Using magnets to move a train. Ordinary trains use fossil fuel engines to propel them, but a maglev train uses magnetic force to move the floating train along as well as to lift it. Think about how you can use one magnet to push or pull another magnet across a table. Magnets can push and pull a train in much the same way. The guideway of a maglev train has a long line of electromagnets. An electric current flows through them and changes which poles are north and which are south. 
when a north pole magnet on the train approaches a south pole magnet on the guideway, the magnets attract. They pull the train forward. When two south pole magnets or two north pole magnets in the back of the train repel each other, they push the train ahead. Because there's no friction between the floating train and the guideway, the train's easy to move. It glides along reaching speeds of up to 300 miles per hour. Let's read the question for this page. What is the most important effect of the magnet train using electromagnets to move? So remember those electromagnets